Food policy is really important to all of us obviously and traditionally what happens is that decisions about food and where it comes from are made by people in positions of power. What we've tried to do over the last 10 months is bring together citizens from disadvantaged parts of the North West for them to figure out what needs to change to make it easier for people to get hold of healthier food. And the way that we've done that is through a series of food inquiries which give people the chance to talk in real depth about the issues around um, getting hold of healthier food. First of all, for people to, to give up their time to come to these kind of things, you need to be able to convince them that there's something in it for them. But what has happened consistently, time after time after time, has been that once we've got people through the door, they're like, wow, this is great, we could actually make a difference here. And these people are treating us actually with respect and they're really listening to us. We went to a weekend away uh, and it was lovely and we got to meet people from Cumbria, Salford, loads of lovely like-minded people uh, who have got the various projects what they were doing off the ground. When our life involved us, it was like uh, opening a new world. Because we're all a group and we've met people who've done this and people who can help us with it, it's, uh, it's great because we think we could actually do that. Yeah. I admire all the people who have put so much effort into this inquiry and, and I hope that it will make a uh, big impact. to like go out and tell other people what you've learned. It's a sense of belief that you can actually yeah. achieve something if you work together. Working with, with our life through the Talk and Food project was a, a really exciting adventure for us. We were really able to work with a vibrant community but one that we hadn't had much contact with in the past. Uh, with our life helping to really facilitate the engagement with that local community. I think the real positives were very much that it was people that we hadn't really spoken to before, um, people really taking ownership and moving things into action. We moved from a recommendation on a piece of paper to actually uh, real um, actions within the community. Our life's about ensuring that people have sufficient information to make informed choices and the engagement that our life brings with local communities enables us and elected members in the case of local authorities the opportunity to, to make informed and hopefully wise decisions about how we spend scarce public money. We are that starter motor for community engagement and empowerment. It doesn't happen out of thin air and it does need investing in. So our plea to commissioners and to public bodies out there is to make sure that they invest in um, these sorts of processes that our life can deliver because without that you don't get these enthusiastic people together and you don't get their commitment long term. More progressive housing organisations are going to want to enable the folk within their neighbourhoods to take more control themselves. And I think the difference between good housing organisations and excellent ones will be that really. It's at the closest link between working with and engaging with those communities and responding and influencing that uh, agenda. And our life's extremely well placed to do that. Our life's community engagement model will help organisations, whether they be private sector, public sector or the voluntary or faith sector groups, to convert engagement into action. 
and I think that's really important in ensuring that local communities and individuals take control of their own destiny. Music